Hello and welcome to the Malaika Rights channel. My name is Malaika Rights and today we are going to be talking about Beauty and the Beast. So many of us are familiar with the story of Beauty and the Beast, but do we actually understand it? For the sake of those not familiar with the Disney tale of Beauty and the Beast, it opens up with the, the prince who has denied an old woman entry to his castle on a cold winter's day. The old woman turns out to be a witch and she curses him and he becomes a beast. The story goes on to say that he would only be released from his curse if a woman fell in love with him before his 21st birthday, when the enchanted rose would lose all its petals. The film then officially starts with a character named Belle, the protagonist, a beautiful girl who loves to read books and lives alone with her father. Belle has a suitor named Gaston. Gaston is your typical toxic man, all bravado and no substance. Belle's father is very dear to her and she is very dear to him. While on a business trip, Belle's father Maurice finds a castle and stays the night there. So the household item servants treat him well but the beast locks him up in a tower. His horse runs off back to town and Belle comes to the castle in search of her father led by the horse. The household item servants lead her to her father and she offers herself up to the beast in exchange for her father. The beast then tells her that she may go anywhere within the castle but the west wing. Belle, however, breaks this rule and the beast displays such wrath that Belle flees from the castle, breaking her word that she would never leave. She's attacked by wolves and the beast comes to her rescue, though he is injured. She tends to his wounds and the two become friends. After some time, they have dinner together and have this ballroom dance to a song that has the lyric... Um, as t a tale as old as time, and that becomes important um, for analysis. Belle longs to see her father, so the beast gives her an enchanted mirror. And Belle finds that her father is lost and alone in the woods after he tried to find the castle again to rescue her. Belle um, is able to go, the beast releases her, and um, gives her the mirror so that she might remember him. Belle rescues her father and brings him back home. Gaston and his men come to take Belle's father to an asylum because of all his talk about a dreadful beast that had tried to hold Belle captive. Belle is obviously alive and well. With Belle's father out of the way, Belle would be vulnerable and have no choice but to marry Gaston, or at least this is what Gaston plans. Belle shows the villagers the beast and calls Gaston the real beast. Gaston orders his men to lock Belle and her father in the basement and he leads the villagers to the beast castle to kill the beast. Belle and her father manage to escape with the help of Chip, an enchanted uh, teacup who is one of the household item servants. And the other enchanted uh, servants manage to repel the villagers but Gaston finds the beast alone in the west wing and starts beating him up. The beast won't fight back because um, he's sort of given up on life given up on all hope of um, seeing Belle again. So Belle rushes in, the beast regains his will to live, so to speak, and um, fights Gaston. However, he doesn't kill him. He makes Gaston swear that he will run away and never come back. Gaston swears that he will do this, but as soon as he is let go, he stabs the beast in the back. Um, Gaston then falls off the roof and dies. And the beast lays dying in the arms of Belle, happy to see her one last time. Belle confesses her love, and the beast turns human. They live happily ever after. Classic Disney. The superficial reading of this story would be to say that Belle tamed the beast and made him fit to live in civilised society, which is your classic good girl tames the bad boy with a heart of gold storyline. But that would be a very basic way of looking at this story, and like Mrs Potts said, it's a, it really is a tale as old as time. This tale of the feminine encountering the man enchanted to appear as a beast stretches back to the Greek myth of Psyche and Eros. When we look at the Disney retelling, the connection isn't obvious until we look at the original Grimm's Brothers story of Beauty and the Beast. For the sake of time, I will not retell the entire original story here, but I'll highlight the key differences between the Disney tale and the Grimm's Brothers tale. 
In the Disney tale, the beast must be tamed by Belle, but in the original tale, the beast must be released from a wicked spell unjustly cast upon him. The Disney tale focuses on the feminine exercising power um, over the masculine by taming him, whereas the original tale focuses on the feminine rescuing the masculine from reputation assassination. In the original story, when Belle's father comes to the castle, he is treated cordially by the beast. He is given a place to sleep. He is fed well. The beast keeps out of sight, but he opens up his home to this weary traveller. In the morning, Belle's father wakes up refreshed, and he thanks his invisible but generous host. On his way out, he comes across a beautiful garden and plucks a rose from it. The beast then appears and scolds him. He tells Belle's father that he must die for this theft. The old man tells uh, the beast about his daughter, who only asked for a single rose. The beast tells um, the old man to, that he may re return home, but he must send his daughter to die in his place. Already, this makes the beast a vastly different character to the one we encounter in the Disney story. This isn't a crude and terrible person who deserved to be turned into a beast, but one that is kind until he feels he has been taken advantage of. Some might say that the beast had self-respect. <laughs> to us, a rose may seem a trivial thing, but to the beast, it was what he prized above all else. After he opened up his home to this man, he stole what the beast loved the most. This has serious implications for our understanding of the story. The story of Beauty and the Beast is not just Belle's story, but also the Beast's story. There is a reason, and also there's reason to believe that the fairy in the Disney story wasn't even good. The original Grimm's Brothers tale certainly makes this claim. In the Disney tale, we are told that because the prince, who was 10 or 11 years old when the curse was placed on him, refused this old woman entry into his home, that he was cursed. From what we know about fae creatures, they are tricksters, they are not trustworthy, so anything the witch has to say should be taken with a pinch of salt, and that is certainly the attitude of the Grimm's Brothers' tale. As I've mentioned before, Belle's story is not so much about taming the beast, as it is about rescuing the man from a negative portrayal that he has been unjustly given. The story mirrors the story of Psyche and Eros. It features a tyrannical female character that wishes to exercise power over the beast, first by transforming an innocent man into a beast, and then by encouraging others to treat him like a beast. Aphrodite tells Eros to make Psyche fall in love with the beast, and then make Psyche um, complete these impossible challenges so that she may forsake Eros, which is what the evil fairy does by sending Belle dreams that portray the beast as evil. The same storyline is used in Pride and Prejudice. The beast, like Darcy, suffers from pride. He is offended by his portrayal, yet does nothing to change it. Belle, like Elizabeth, represents prejudice. It is Belle's subconscious dreams that continue to paint the beast as well a beast, while her lived experience of him is quite different. Elizabeth Bennet paints a negative picture of Darcy, not only for herself, but for others. And it is also she that redeems his image afterwards by revealing his good deeds and also by marrying him. What is apparent is that the Beast is not suffering from a wicked heart, but character assassination. Because of this, the Beast lives in isolation, separated from the group. The heroine rescues him by bringing him back into the group, and presenting him not as the other, but as part of the whole. In the Disney story, this is what Belle does when she starts to list off the beast's good traits and calls Gaston a real beast in, in comparison. In the Grimm's Brothers tale, the beast is never cruel to, to Belle, and the human servant Clara encourages Belle to form her own opinions of the beast and not listen to the opinion of others. In Belle's dreams, a dark and sinister fairy tells her to beware of the beast's apparent kindness because it, hi it hides a heart of stone. This, of course, is false, and the beast's actions prove otherwise. When Belle asked to go home and visit her family for a week, the beast granted her request on the condition 
that she return once the week is up or he will die of sorrow. It's not that I'll return or I'll kill your whole family. It's return or I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be lonely. <laughs> I'll die of sorrow. In the tale of Psyche and Eros, it is Psyche's sisters who make her break her word to Eros. And the same thing happens in the story of Beauty and the Beast. Her sisters make her stay one day, hoping that the beast will die. When we look at Belle's sisters, they are obsessed with material goods, just like the three maidens in the Disney production who desire Gaston. They are just as shallow as he is. They envy Belle because of the treatment she receives from the beast. But they have never been able to see past his presentation and encourage Belle to forsake the beast for a day, knowing that it would cause his death. What, we can, what they cannot control, or have, they seek to destroy. This is the essence of toxic femininity. In the myth of Psyche and Eros, Aphrodite embodies toxic femininity. Because she cannot control the beauty of Psyche, which has ensnared even her own son Eros, and in turn made Aphrodite lose control over him, she seeks to punish Psyche. And we see the same thing in Pride and Prejudice with Mr. Darcy's aunt, Lady Catherine, and her behaviour towards Elizabeth. Here is why the superficial reading of Beauty and the Beast's story doesn't work, even if we just have to look at the Disney adaptation alone. It's not your classic bad boy turns good because of a good girl story. Gaston is the bad boy. He's the hunter. He's the muscular, handsome man with all the resources and access to any girl he wants. He's a leader. He's assertive. He's the societal portray um, portrayal of all a man should be. But he lacks the substance. He's proud, arrogant, narcissistic, violent, treacherous, and lacks integrity. He'll lie to get his way. He'll manipulate. He'll take advantage of someone at their weakest. And he has no problem doing this. He is rotten on the inside, and he attracts pretty but equally superficial women. The three maidens are also the societal expectation of women. They are pretty, golden-haired, dainty, their dresses accentuate their figures, and they only have eyes for the only male with the, mo with the most resources who is seen as the strongest in the group, and that is Gaston. They want... They are what men should want according to society they are feminine fit and friendly well you attract what you are i guess so if this were a bad boy gets redeemed or beast tamed by woman sort of story then gaston would be the bad boy that needed saving through the love of a good woman but that's clearly not the case when we look at the beast in the disney production He's awkward, antisocial, shy, has a massive library. His only friends are inanimate objects. But you get the picture. He can't control his own strength. He's clumsy. While he is capable of violence as he demonstrates in the fight against the wolves, he is still gravely injured. So we can tell he doesn't fight very often. And overall he seems lonely and lost and a bit childish. He's not the socialite that Gaston is, and he's certainly not this alpha male type of character. Sibel isn't really doing much taming here so much as bringing him out of his hairy shell and revealing the person beneath to the world. If anything, she creates an environment where he feels it's safe to come out. What we see with Gaston is that he's trying to be... He's trying to to be this uh, alpha male, but he lacks all of the values. It's all superficial. And he has all the outward appearance, same as the maidens. They have the outward appearance, but they don't have any of the substance. But when it comes to Belle, she has the beauty as well, but hers is not superficial. There's substance behind that. I think that's why she was so unattracted to Gaston. Because she, you can't attract what you are not yourself. And that's why Gaston could not get her. The only way he could um, get any of her attention was to trap her in uncomfortable circumstances. So much so to the point that he wanted to send her father to an asylum. But I want to present this idea so that we can take a look 
at the Beauty and the Beast story differently. Because the story ultimately is not just Belle's story and it's not a beast taming story either. Because in order for it to be a beast taming story, we'd have to see the beast portraying Gaston like qualities. This is more about drawing the man out of his uh, seclusion. And it's not about, um, you know, rescuing simps, <laughs> because that, that's the other extreme. I think the beast has all the qualities. The qualities are there, especially in the original myth. The qualities are there and he does have self-respect when he feels taken advantage of the consequences are severe but he is also capable of showing mercy although he says um he will kill maurice for stealing the rose he doesn't and he doesn't treat bell badly either he's moved to pity but he does he does have um self-respect like i was saying so this is not a simp but he's not gaston either so I think it's very important for us when we're looking at the story to see more than the superficial reading because it's not about rescuing this terrible character and seeing the good that no one else sees necessarily. I think Pride and Prejudice is just um, another, another, another version of the Beauty and Beast story. When it comes to lessons that we can take away from that, there are so many lessons that we can pull out from the Beauty and the Beast story in terms of relationships. One of the lessons that I, that I think personally would be good to pull out is not to think about this in polar opposites. It's not go for the sort of bad boy or go for the person who has no self-respect because that's not what the beast is. The beast has the self-respect. He has all these qualities, but he's been demonized. And what Pride and Prejudice does, just for us to go into it for a moment, because I think it's a very good comparison to the Beauty and the Beast story. I think actually it's an extension um, or uh, a, a different version of the Beauty and the Beast story. But what we see there is that the reason he's been demonized is because he's not as social as um, some of the other men. He seems to hold himself aloof. And that's not to say that the beast has no flaws. I mean, he's prideful. That's one of his flaws. But it's not as bad as him being toxic. Beauty is not redeeming this toxic character. In fact, I don't think she's redeeming the beast at all. Instead, what she's doing is countering the perception of the beast and allowing other people to see that this man is a good person, vouching for him, repairing his reputation, because your reputation is what precedes you. It's what people think about you, it's what people know about you before you get there, essentially. So I think that's one of the main lessons, not to look at the story as such a, in a superficial way, but to dive deeper and actually dissect the story and understand it to sort of see what it's about. I think the second um, lesson that we can take from there is obviously about Gaston. He has all of the societal expectations. The maidens have all of the societal expectations but they have none of the substance. It's not that muscles are inherently bad or assertiveness is inherently bad. These are good things. But what is more important are the values underpinning that. It's what's behind all of these things. Because as we've seen with Gaston, you can kind of lose all of the superficial stuff. And his lack of integrity led to his death. His muscles couldn't save him from dying. But if he had had integrity, if he had stuck to his word, because the beast let him go, if he had stuck to his word, he would have lived. But because the values that should have been beneath the pretty face and, and the muscles were not there, 
he died. I think that's a very important lesson that we can get from the Disney version. Because in the original tale, there is no Gaston character. So I don't think we can completely discard the Disney one and just look at the original because there is a very important lesson to learn from the Gaston character. And he is a character that I think was written very well. So that's one of the reasons why it's very important to master the basics and the basics are that character building because like Gaston you can have all the muscles in the world but when it comes down to it it's about your integrity. And Gaston was not a character who was um who was just you know putting up a front and nobody really listened to him. He was a leader. He could rally people up. There's a song um, during the, the Disney film where everyone's sort of telling Gaston, oh, we, we love this about you and all of that stuff. And nobody is like this. No one's like Gaston. He's a leader in the community, but he's superficial. There's nothing of substance underneath. And if you do not have the values instilled in yourself you will not be able to recognize when somebody is shallow that's one of the most important takeaways from the disney movie bell could recognize that there was something in the beast because she herself was not a shallow person that was why she was able to see past the hairy exterior to the person inside so that's the most important takeaway and um, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I've definitely enjoyed re-watching um, and rereading the Beauty and the Beast story. So I hope you guys have enjoyed exploring it with me. I hope that this has given you something new to think about. Let's have a discussion about it in the comment section. So thank you so much for watching the video. This has been the Malaika Rights channel.